I'm Philip Cox. I was a student of Lloyd Rees's from 1957 to about, or a lifetime really, because I always kept contact with him even after university days. His uh, first wife, Dulcie, um, was a relative of my wife and uh, we were able to discuss Dulcie quite openly with him, but it was always a great source of um, sorrow and depression that uh, Lloyd had in his life and he never could quite shake it off, particularly since she died in childbirth and, and that was, you know, one of the great tragedies and he, he, he couldn't throw it off really. Um, but he did have a, a wonderfully happy life with Marjorie. I mean, she was such a darling and she looked after him so well and um, everybody loved her as well. But uh, that was, I think that the, the death of his first wife has really characterised a lot of his, his uh, emotional thinking thereafter. Well, my relationship with uh, Lloyd Rees started in, in 1957 when I arrived at Sydney University as a fresher. And Lloyd Rees uh, and Roland Wakeland uh, established a studio um, for the whole of architecture. So we, we did art for the in, entire course at Sydney University and we were, luckily we were situated in the main quad. And so in this wonderful Gothic environment, we we had our studios and um, Lloyd had a remarkable collection of, of uh, plaster casts which uh, were borrowed from the Nicholson Museum and uh, we, we had to do life drawing from the plaster casts which everybody hated and complained to him. He said, why aren't we outside in the open air, you know, drawing architecture and, and being free and said these plaster casts which seemed to be, you know, rather the Beaux-Arts academic way of learning how to draw and learning to study and, and form. And, uh, <clears throat> but he, he was quite stubborn about that. He said, this is the way you do it and this is the way you should, you're taught. And, and Roland Wakelin, he protected enormously. And um, <clears throat> we didn't quite appreciate the importance of Roland Wakelin. Uh, but Lloyd knew that Wakelin was a great artist, even though Wakelin in the 50s wasn't regarded great at all. And we didn't, as students, regard him as great. We thought he was rather, you know, passe artist and not avant-garde in any way. <clears throat> but Lloyd had this wonderful protective uh, instinct with, um, with Roland Wakelin and defended him against student criticism, which was quite constant really in that time. But Lloyd <coughs> had this incredible uh, compassion. Uh, he, he had lots of students that had absolutely no ability of drawing or painting at all. And he used to, you know, agonise when he'd go up to him some student who'd been doing these terrible scribbles and, you know, terrible art and to try and find something nice about him. And um, I remember one day this girl had done, you know, something quite awful and he said, oh, but the paper is very beautiful, you know, my dear. It's beautiful paper. <laughs> and uh, dismissed her, you know, in a very, very nice way. Uh, but he, he encouraged us uh, enormously to um, appreciate Australian art and lectured in, in European art as well. Um, we had a funny sort of period because we had Bob Hughes in our year and Bob Hughes was painting and getting um, enormous accolades downtown and Lloyd Rees had an exhibition, I think it was in 58, um, at the same time, and it was hardly commented on in the Sydney Morning Herald. Hughes got headlines, you know, this child protege, blah, 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 and he was the master, you know, and Lloyd Rees had an exhibition. 
Uh, and it, it hurt him enormously. And although he had enormous respect for Bob Hughes because of, Bob knew a lot and he was a, a, a great intellect when it came to the appreciation of Australian art. But um, they were very, you know, poles apart. He, Hughes saw uh, Rees as the romantic <coughs> and rather irrelevant in terms of modernism, uh, where, you know, Lloyd was also not really appreciate, appreciative of modernism. I, I think he, <coughs> he was more at home with the old masters and the great tradition, the Streetons, the Robertses and the McCubbins of Australian art rather than looking forward to um, the, the Roy de Mestre and people who were, you know, avant-garde in, in terms of um, post-impressionism than he was. I don't think there has been a, an artist uh, that has the incredible precision and uh, dedication to pencil drawing as Lloyd Rees. I was always fascinated to, to see that those very early drawings, which were meticulous. They were done with a 4H a pencil, <coughs> very hard pencil. They were just beautifully drawn and it must have taken him ages to do these drawings because I mean, knowing you know that I work in pencil too, and, and and they do take a long time, particularly when you're that meticulous. And virtually every leaf of the tree was drawn, and ev there was such a a loving response to whatever he was drawing, whether it be a landscape or a, a, a great tree. Which I, I always thought his Morton Bay fig drawings were just absolutely mind-blowingly <laughs> wonderful, but. That was a wonderful ability that he had. It was almost a, a super photographic in, in the way in which, which he did those drawings. And then on the other hand, he could do something that was very free, you know, that something that, would, uh, that ca captured a, a more poetical um, aspect of what it, the subject he was doing. But it still had a, you know, the, um, a certain discipline in, in the way that he saw landscape. Um, I particularly like, you know, used to like looking at his sketchbooks, which uh, he'd done overseas, and um, and where he had used pencil and wash uh, as a as a medium. And now I, I think that there's a lyricism and there's a joy in that. You know, is obviously just so wrapped up in in the in the subject matter he's done that. He gets that message across to you, you know, whether it's an Italian hill village or a road or, you know, it's almost like the, uh, <coughs> uh, the road to Berry type of thing where it is just a magnificent, um, you know, um, translation of the mood of, of what the subject was. Lloyd Rees had a great love in his life, and that was Professor Leslie Wilkinson, who was a dean of the Faculty of Architecture, who employed Lloyd. Um, he worshipped Wilkinson, and Wilkinson was this English austere character, um, rather aristocratic in his uh, demeanour, and bringing to Australia this great love of Mediterranean architecture you know, the whitewashed walls, the terracotta roofs, and the neoclassical <coughs> appendages and he, you know, porticos and colonnades that he put on in, um, as evidence, you know, the physics school in, in Sydney University. And Lloyd, you know, worshipped that, you know, the intellect of Wilkinson. And it was through Wilkinson, I think, that Lloyd received a greater appreciation of architecture. And it was through architecture that Lloyd's appreciation of Sydney, uh, and he saw it in, in a slightly different way after the contact with Wilkinson. If you look at his early drawings of Brisbane and all the rest of it, uh, before the Sydney contact, they weren't as evocative, I think, and in terms of appreciation as the post-Wilkinson uh, situation. But certainly it was the appreciation of Sydney and its urbanism, and particularly its its historic buildings that um, 
were then intact before the demolitions of the, during the late 50s that were happening, which caused him great pain, you know, to see magnificent buildings. And he, he would t talk about, <clears throat> you know, the, the old New South Wales bank buildings with their wonderful sculpture, and it reminded him of Paris and Rome, you know, where, where uh, Sydney had sort of um, taken up the neoclassical approach to architecture. But he saw a richness in, in the delivery of sculpture, architecture and painting, um, and saw the richness in Sydney, you know, with those buildings. So the sketching of those buildings as a record became a very, very important aspect of, um, of other people's appreciation of the urbanism of Sydney. But he influenced so many people, you know, in understanding of what Sydney was all about and why Sydney should have been kept to a greater extent than the wholesale, virtually the wholesale demolition of, of, of Victorian Sydney. My, my favourite memory of, of Lloyd was being able to chat to him and talk about art. And, uh, and of course, it's, it's, when we were students, we'd try to be controversial and say, well, Lloyd, why don't you like Picasso? Now tell us why don't you like Picasso? Oh, Chagall saw something in, in, in art, but the blue period of Picasso was wonderful, but he erred after that. I mean, I really don't, trust the man in the later periods. And we say, well, we rather like it. He, 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 cert he certainly didn't cotton on to very contemporary art. Um, I think he was bewildered by people like Chagall, uh, Picasso, even Kandinsky and people like that. He, he went up to a certain time where uh, the, the, the celebration of the human body and the figure and landscape were obvious, more obvious than, than the abstractions. Um, even, I, I'd say that um, Cezanne, uh, to a certain extent, was, was an influence in, in Lloyd's work, but he never embraced, he never took that other step and he remained very much a traditionalist. Um, I think that the South Coast series that he did and the Hawkesbury series, and the South Coast with the rock and the um, sea scapes that came in and of course the Hawkesbury with the sandstone uh, cliffs are the, his greatest work. I don't think that the latter period uh, where his eyesight was failing is as great as that. I, uh, I certainly bought some uh, of that period because they were very Turner-esque and he loved Turner. He thought Turner was a, um, you know, one of the greatest, and of course he is one of the greatest. And th the influence uh, of that misty, you know, uh, as he was going blind virtually, but that wonderful vision of the muted colours and forms and uh, are so reminiscent of, of the Turner um, the paintings. But he goes beyond Turner. I mean, it wasn't just... Uh, imit imitating Turner at all. He, it, it was Lloyd in his own way, just feeling the environment, you know, just f being caught up with that um, colour and uh, emergence of form within, you know, shadowy aspects of, of space, which were intriguing. So I <clears throat> used to love talking to him about you know that, and, and, and you know and why why he was approaching it away from the 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 great period, um, which was the sandstone um, South Coast series uh, that he'd done. But he was a lovable man. I mean, he 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 <clears throat> had so much quality. You know, if I, if I could describe any person that I've met that had true honesty and gentleness um, of of soul and spirit, it was Lloyd Rees. He was just immediately accessible and um, 
revealing, you know, that you could reveal yourself to him and him to you. And that, that's a rare experience. 